So for this episode, I'm going to be covering the changes that were done to the character of Elrond. So the first minor change occurs in the prologue, after the Lost Alliance are successful and they beat Sauron. Now in the films at this point, Isildur is about to throw the ring into the fire, and Elrond is encouraging him to do so, to throw the ring. But instead Isildur walks away, and this causes Elrond to shout at him to come back and throw it. And this is different from the books, because in the books the only reason Isildur keeps it mainly, okay sure there's a temptation, but he also keeps it as compensation for the deaths of his father and his brother. Because neither Elrond nor Isildur knew that by keeping the ring, there was a chance that Sauron could regain his power and return to Middle-earth. Also, I think one of the main reasons that Elrond wanted to destroy the ring in the books was to remove any traces of the artifacts that empowered Sauron, and the ring was the most important one. He wanted to create a clean slate of sorts. While in the films it's almost as if he knows that by keeping the ring, you're basically keeping Sauron alive, that he knew that Sauron's essence was in the ring itself. So now, since Elrond lives in Rivendell, we're not going to see any changes to him until the hobbits reach that area. And actually the next change is exactly before Frodo enters Rivendell, while he's being chased by the Nazgul. Because in the film, Arwen, who's Elrond's daughter, is carrying Frodo on horseback and she starts muttering some elvish words, some magical words, which cause the river to rise against the Nazgul and basically take them somewhere else. It kills their horses and drags them off. And this is different because in the books it's actually Elrond who does this. And he actually manages to do this using the power of one of the three elvish rings. The one called Vilia, in fact, which was the ring of Sapphire. So the next change occurs in Rivendell also, where in the films uh, the fellowship is chosen that everyone starts offering, you know, you have my sword, my bow, my axe. While in the books it's actually very different that the only two certain members were Frodo and Sam, and everyone chose the other members that will take part in the fellowship, and he chose different races to represent Middle-earth. So there are actually no more changes to Elrond in the first film. So we're gonna move on to the second. Now in the second, the first change occurs when Galadriel and Elrond are having a telepathic communication of sorts, where she's asking Elrond if they should send elvish reinforcements to Helm's Deep. And eventually they send uh, quite a, a lot of elves who help in the battle. And this doesn't occur at all in the books, that no such conversation takes place and there are no elvish reinforcements in fact. So that was the only change in the second, so third film now. So in the third film, Elrond is seen worrying a lot about his daughter, that she's going to become mortal, that she's gonna die in Middle Earth, and he even ends up deceiving her, telling her that he used his gift of foresight to see her widowed with no future. And this doesn't happen at all in the books, again, because in the books he has a lot more faith in Aragorn to, that he'll succeed in his task, and he had actually promised Aragorn that he'll allow him to marry Arwen once Aragorn is the king of Gondor and Arnor. So in the films Elrond actually convinces Arwen to go to the Grey Havens, and on her way there she sees her, a, a vision of her son and Aragorn, which makes her come back, tell him that there is still a future. And this causes him to reforge the blade of Narsil in the film. But again, this doesn't happen in the books, because in the books the sword is actually reforged when Aragorn leaves Rivendell. Also in the films, then, Elrond presents the sword to Aragorn at Dunharrow, while in the books he doesn't appear there, and instead he sends his sons and the rangers of the north to give a message to Aragorn and help him in his quest. So now I'm going to move on and talk about the changes they did to Elrond's character, and they're actually very significant ones between the book and the films. And the first one I can think of is that in the films, he seems very scornful towards men, that he blames that all of Middle-earth's troubles and evils on men, that if men had succeeded in destroying the ring, none of this would have happened. And this is different from the books, because first of all, he doesn't have that distaste or scornful attitude towards men. And he also believes that even though the kingdoms of men at the moment are weak, 
with a strong leader such as Aragorn, they could reunite and actually a force that could face off against Mordor. The other change I'd like to talk about is that in the films he almost seems to have given up hope in the people of Middle-earth, that for him it's better that the elves just leave the Undying Lands and leave Middle-earth on its own, that he thinks Sauron basically won, there's no real point in fighting back. And in the books he still has hope and he wouldn't give up Middle-earth without a fight. In fact, he's one of the main leaders that starts the fellowship that formulates the plan. And so I think that he was still very driven, and he even believed that Middle-earth had a fighting chance. So that basically wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you've got any advice, questions, or suggestions for other characters you'd like me to cover, feel free to leave a comment below. As always, if you enjoyed it, feel free to leave a like, and if you're interested, subscribe. Thanks as always.